All right, gentlemen, I think we're here to talk about software-defined networking. Lots of people have been discussing it, but it's always been inside the data center. And, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to try and tackle the hard part, and that is, how, what do you do between the data centers? And, and we spend a lot of money today on a lot of transport equipment. We're going to try and optimize it. And, and Jim and Mark are here to try and help me straighten it out today. So, uh, you know, what do you guys think? Is this something that, that is solvable? Is it something that we, uh, that we can get there? It's, uh, it's, again, it's a difficult problem to go tackle. Well, I think it's not only solvable, but we have to look at just as the data centers led with, uh, with software-defined networking within their walls, they're again leading for outside of their walls. So the impetus from this isn't the great thought leaders of the world going, hey, what's the next big thing? It's SDN. It's one of need. We have to solve it because if you look at as they've outgrown the walls of their own data center and they have to interconnect, they have monster databases that have to be in sync geographically dispersed data centers in sync all around the world. So it's not whether or not we can solve it, it's a must. We do have to solve that, and I think SDN is, uh, is, is the answer. Right, and, and today we've been throwing big bandwidth at that, right? Because yeah. we nail up that bandwidth for busy hour traffic, and then we leave it there. And Mark, I don't know, what do you, how do well, we? Well, I mean, the question I have is what, you, you act like the, the, the problem is well defined, and we do connect them today with large bandwidth. It's connected. Uh, we can give connectivity between data centers. That's not the issue. There, and I think the, the argument behind the SDN uh, approach is can we do it more efficiently? Can we uh, create some sort of unified control plane so that you're managing both the data center uh, uh, forwarding plane along with an optical layer connectivity, a switching connectivity, all within a common control plane. And at least that's what I hear uh, is, is the approach behind SDN and OpenFlow. Yeah, I would agree that the, the goal of separating the control plane from the data plane is a good one, right? I mean, we've right. done this before in networking. It, it, it's a solid idea. Yes. If we can set something aside, a path computational engine or whatever we whatever. want to call it, but yeah. something that can look across multi-layer, multi-domain mm -hmm. and determine where those demands are at right. and then instruct the transport network to modify itself to dynamically reconfigure, then we do believe that there's significant savings to be had. Uh, as opposed to just throwing bandwidth at it, because right. obviously that you know everybody shows the curves and and revenues flat to, to declining, mm -hmm. and the cost per bit has to right. keep declining at the same rate or more, and there's only so much we can do from that angle. We have to get smarter about how we use those bits as right. opposed to just throwing more bandwidth at right. it. Right, right. But I mean, things don't just happen to happen. As you mentioned, there's problems that, are, that have been encountered that are trying to be solved. So. We do have large static pipes between these data centers and between network nodes today. There's, there's something must be broken for people to be going down this path. And, it, and I don't think it's just that uh, revenue uh, per bit is declining faster than just over-provisioning will allow, but also you need that dynamic nature of the network to do these the new uh, needs of the network as dynamic uh, load balancing among the data centers. You can't do that with a fat static pipe, and you certainly don't want to try to do it to, to meet peak demand times with these big fat static pipes. We need that dynamic nature. Networks have had the ability to be dynamic for a long time, and maybe this is going a new direction, but. Yeah, to, well, I, well. I agree, to, we've had the ability to do some dynamic stuff, right? In the electrical layer, in the uh, mm -hmm. sonnet fabrics, you know, prior to this, uh, OTN fabrics going forward, but in the electrical layer, we have had the ability to, to move that traffic around a little bit, bandwidth on demand. I mean, mm -hmm. it, that's not a new concept by any means. It could be applied to this very easily if we had this again. I open API and it talked to the path computation engine and said, uh, PC says, I need bandwidth on demand of X, please deliver that. Right. Uh, oh, again, we can do this at the electrical layer, mm -hmm. but that would still mean nailed up optical pipes. And that's where a lot of the cost is and, and, and power consumption and everything else yeah. associated with it. One of the things that we're, we've been talking about a while is, you know, a dynamic optical layer. So this, right. this whole idea of a con contentionless, colorless, directionless, next generation rotum, something that would sit at the bottom layer mm -hmm. and provide that flexibility right. that we could actually manipulate or dynamically control that physical layer. And that's something we haven't been able to do in the past. Well, are we saying we hope SDN will get us there? I think we're hoping that SDN will allow us to optimize it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the, the technologies are, are completely separate. So we, we will get to this dynamic optical right. switching and we can control that uh, through management systems just like we always have in the past. The idea would be, can we take advantage of the software-defined networking uh, ecosystem, if you will, and say, well, let's stretch that beyond the data center. 
let's take that and try and optimize the connectivity between our data centers as opposed to just inside the mm -hmm. data center. And, and coming from the transport world, you know, we're looking for a way to try and optimize that very high cost portion of our network. And, and we, we can throw more bandwidth at it, of course, but those static pipes cost money even when nobody's using them. Right. And that's, if there's a way to take it out of pool, then that's a well, that's way. that's kind of what I wanted to to kind of bring into this is that we are talking about connectivity that is very expensive, long haul. Either the transport itself or the interfaces we're using for long haul, uh, whether you have a reconfigurable rotums or not, uh, tend to be a, a, a large expenditure that are often. Uh, uh, prohibitive to build and just let sit there. So uh, large networks have, have traditionally looked for demand, either a forecast of a required demand to build it or a customer demand to build it, and then it gets built. So to build it and they will come, as the old phrase yeah. went, <laughs> to allow the flexibility and to allow the, the uh, uh, on-demand kind of connectivity requires a commitment to go there. And so you have to counter that cost of having it sit there to be available to switch. Uh, and then is it, do you gain enough by having it there to counter the cost of building it? Yeah, I can tell you that from a regular bandwidth on demand, it never worked, right? We were yeah. never able to really sell this because having that rental pool of cars, if you will, and yeah. nobody showing up to take them at least most of the time just didn't work. The business right. case was, was very mm -hmm. poor. I think what the, the new realm of we're going to take virtualize these data centers and move that traffic around dynamically and I'm going to shift the traffic, large volumes of traffic, then starts to worry the guys uh, on, on our side. You know, before, like you said, it was, it's one thing if the, the traffic is relatively static. Today yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. The static really, we don't have a need to move bandwidth, large amounts of bandwidth around in the, uh, in the physical layer, mm -hmm. uh, layer zero and one. But if the data center guys do what they tell us they're going to do, uh, then we're going to be faced with that problem. And, and again, coming from the transport layer, we're saying, oh, that, that, that worries us quite a bit if we're going to have to nail up that much bandwidth. When it's the same amount of uh, interfaces, if we could just reuse them, That's then the, of course that, that cost comes But down. the interfaces are dedicated to specific points. Yes. And those are, those are fixed. You can't share an interface at one data center at another one. Right.